Okay, hi everyone. Thanks so much for being here. Welcome to the Crested Tick Collective live stream for Earth Day. Big happy Earth Day to everybody. A huge thank you that you're here there wherever you are during this pandemic. It's um it's really amazing to be able to to still be able to put something like this on and still be able to come together as a community and I can't wait to share what all of us are going to read for you. It's going to be beautiful. Um, so, uh, first of all, just to explain a bit about who CTC are, we are a group of contemporary women poets, and we all met on the Royal Holloway Creative Writing Programme. Some of us are MA, some of us are MA alumni, some of us are current PhDs, um, and we were pretty much all taught by Riddell Olsen at one point, so we just want to extend a huge thank you to her, um, and to Robert Hampson as well for his constant um, support. So thank you so much to both of them and to our HUL Poetics Research Centre generally. Without them we wouldn't have met and we wouldn't uh, be half the poets that we are today I think. So a thank you to them. Um, another thing I want to mention while I'm here is if you have been following our social media you might see that today we have posted a community reading of unnamed dragonfly species by Juliana Spar. There is a total of, I think, 25 or 26 poets from all over the world who have contributed to that project. And um, I mean, it's just it, it's just amazing that we were able to pull it together in five days. And it's a really important poem, really important message for Earth Day. So please do give that a, give that a watch. Um, we'll post links to that and to, to everyone's socials and websites as soon as this stream is finished. But before I go any further, with all of that said, I just want to say a huge thank you to the poets who are involved with that, everyone in CTC, obviously, as well as uh, JD House, Yvonne Litchell, Caroline Harris, Professor Robert Hampson, Eve Williams, Caitlin Barry, Rowan Evans, Amy Evans Bauer, Brock Russell, CL CA Conrad, Matt Martin, Armorel Weston, Alan Fisher, Dr. Will Montgomery, Ben Pellin, Sarah Cave, Juliana Spar, of course, and to the poets who couldn't be involved but who uh, gave us lots of support as well, Cassandra Troyan and Sarah Dawson and Riddell Olson again. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you. It's it's such a nice thing to see come together at such an important time. Um, so we are about to go live with Bryony, who's going to be our very first poet. Oh, one more thing, just to say that uh, the Crested Tick Collective anthology, which came out last year, Harpies, is still available on the Crested Tick Collective website. Um, E.P. Jenkins will show you a copy of that later on. Um, and I think that's all. Oh, and to welcome Tesse and Tunisia and myself, I suppose, for being brand new members of the Crested Tick Collective. We're really, really excited to be here, really excited to see what we do with all of you. Um, but without any further ado, allow me to introduce Brian Hughes. Bryony is a practice-based doctoral researcher at Royal Holloway. She is interested in kinetic movement in language, water bodies, textual bodies, the archive and site-specific writing. Her first collection is forthcoming with Broken Sleep Books in May. Make sure you come to the online book launch of that. And she has been featured in Data Bleed, Decorating Dissidents, Permeable Barrier and Stride Magazine amongst others. Bryony's limited edition book works have been collected by the Book Art Bookshop, Senate House Library, the National Poetry Library and Foyle Special Collections at King's College London. Bryony is a founding member of the Crested Tick Collective and curates the CTC pamphlet series. So please welcome to the digital stage, Bryony Hughes. Hello everybody. Um, welcome to my living room, that is really weird to say. I'm just going to be reading from a couple of little collections that I've been working on. Um, the first one um, was created through a walk along the foreshore of the Thames River um, at a spot where my mum used to live on a boat. Um, and I respond to objects that are found along the foreshore um, through each poem. Dead bird. About the house that moved Frog Street to West Street, 
Remove that red coat, this crow flies 157 miles east of Sands End, dig a hole in the foreshore, release chain, no anchor as concrete lodges this vicarage. Classified regeneration zone, blue frequency aids her sleep. Bottle cap. Faversham marks the spot. Medway swale Thames steam intertwined in our offer zone. Two ties to the sail, reaching towards his thinking spot, smells like childhood, bylaws, or bathing as pastime. When present, I, I scrub off the sand. Cabbage. If unexpected, people move in together. Don't shit where you hear the sound of the generator. Runner bean thrives on deck, cheapest vegetables in SW11. A suitable receptacle, a discharge point. During the inspection, it was noted that some eight or nine people reside aboard the vessel. Plastic. This cable ties object, grouping the foreshore unsuitable, fuel restrictions or laddered access, walk the plank or crawl the plank. Don't drop the body or head into the mud. Those blitz bricks slip to shatter. Your sculpt survival asks, are you recycling right? Is your post box strapped to a nearby tree? Watch as rent shudders into the thousands. Thanks. Um, the next couple of poems I'm going to read, um, I'm just going to quickly share my screen with you because they're a little bit visual, just bear with me. Okay, hopefully you should be able to see that. <laughs> Skirting pears on, into jam jars and planters, entering as a wasp those red berries. Two chip single glaives flick gravel, press an archive of moss against your forehead, wait. Your valley is robust, aligned, salmon paste bamboo, patches in and out of reach, front door, lower garden, pathway, well. Panting like rabbits. Until only the blue parts remain. Stepping out as albatross in the visible, consider her edges nested. When sizing is added to your paper, consider shame in VP PVA, consider, oh, consider reaction in flower, consider rabbit skin, gaping upholstery as with the tide. Watch as the plate shatters, that gray and red detector, keys, Grandma's pond, grandpa's orchard, less than a yard. Or consider Heather. Try and stop sharing my screen, hello. Um, so I now have the honor of introducing one of my favorite poets and people, Kat Chong. Um, it's Kat's birthday today. So please raise a glass of water, uh, tea, coffee, alcohol, even though it's, it's four o'clock, I'm not judging. Um, your isolation beverage of choice, for this wonderful human. Kat is a transcultural twister child negotiating an embodied rejection of fixity and belonging. They're a graduate of the Poetic Practice MA at Royal Holloway and currently doing a PhD on global female authored illness narratives at Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. They're a proud queer crit and happy sacrificer of sleep for poetry, whose durational work flails wildly between conceptual, conceptual and confessional tendencies. They have a forthcoming book chapter in The M Word with Flint Books, edited by the lovely Caroline Harris. Um, an upcoming extract of their master's manuscript is in Ake Magazine's issue three. And they've also been recently published in Permeable Map Barrier, which is an online journal created by JD House. Their interests include ecology, feminism, gender, health, contemporary poetics, medical humanities, and disability studies, all the good stuff. Welcome, Kat. Hey, thank you, Bryony. Um, it is definitely 11 o'clock somewhere as it is here at the moment. Hi from Singapore, by the way. Um, thank you everyone who's currently tuned into our live stream. Um, like it's it's really cool to be doing this. Um, I'm going to read something that I've been working on called a uh, well, body of declaration and withdrawal as a response to going into opiate withdrawal during this pandemic. Um, I've been listening to Caroline Bergvall's sound poem Via or Via, which enacts a kind of circling around senselessness within a forest of language and subsequently getting lost there. 
I've been reading my uh, Morosa de Giorgio's Diadem 2, in which there's this kind of gorgeous derangement of meaning halfway through the line. And I think both of these have influenced this poem a great deal. I think it proposes that in order to survive, I'll have to flee into a reservoir of language and possibly even drown there. Um, this is about 10 minutes long, so if at any point you need to mute, do so. I won't judge. Look after yourselves, please. Um, we love you and like we're very glad you're here. Um, so this is body of declaration and withdrawal. My temperature is below 38 degrees C and I am awakening, I awakening, I'm awake, I awake, I awake, I'm awoken again, awoken from the nightmare in which the woman I love is a serial killer. And I know I must make myself small. I know I must make myself, I know I must make, I know I myself, I must make myself small. I know that she's walking towards the place where I am hiding, towards the place where I am either hiding, either place where I am, where she's holding a gun, where she's holding will be holding a gun. And I know that it is loaded, that she's about to shoot me in the head, about to shoot me about in me, about to shoot me in the head, shoot in me. She's about, she's me, she's me, she's me, about to shoot. And I know it is then that I know, I know that I am in withdrawal. My temperature is below 38 degrees C, and on the 18th of March, the declaration is altered. The declaration requires my temperature, requires my body, altered below 38 degrees C, requires my body. I have no fever, cough, runny nose, sore throat, or difficulty in breathing. Have no fever, cough, nose, throat, or difficulty in breathing. Have no fever, throat, or difficulty. Have no throat, deep breathing in difficulty. I have no breathing in difficulty in fever, throat, or difficulty. Nose, no breathing in what I have requires altered declaration. My body, what I have. I stand in the rain, breathing in the roof, the altered pouring in rain or declaration. Difficulty, a sore thunder, breathing in throat space, thunder, declaration, cough, I, my body have sand. My declaration is altered, I have no space left in me breathing. My temperature is below 38 degrees C and I have no insidious infection. Withdrawing, not insidious, I have no infection. The call to social distancing to call in line, the social within the call to distancing. I withdrawing in distance in line with the call, the undergraduates and I and hall in, in hall in withdrawal to call to further limit the gathering, to limit further insidious infection, the gathering limit further in line, limit the distancing to social infection, the gathering to call social distancing a declaration of touching a paradox for self-touching in communal halls. These new precautionary measures are in addition to the ones currently in force. These new measures cannot force wonder, cannot force what it means in addition to declaration, in addition to withdrawal, in addition to touching paradox for self-isolating a communal touching, in addition to isolating paradox in a communal self-touching, in addition to forcing withdrawal, in addition to the ones currently in. My temperature is below 38 degrees C and I, withdrawing, have received declaration writing with very sad news, writing sad news, writing very sad writing with news. We have decided on the basis of our risk assessment to cancel, withdrawing an act of retracting back, taking away, given granted allowed possession permission on the basis of our assessment, the basis of our risk to cancel our assessment, basis to cancel very sad news with writing, our risk assessment to cancel on the basis of our writing, the very sad risk of assessment, we've decided withdrawing to all in subtraction from place, space, position, in subtraction from this year's conference, your flight to London Heathrow, your family. The suspension of travel and recall of all students and employees from abroad remains in place. This year's travel suspension in place, your conference, your flight, your family, your travel and recall from abroad, your students remains in place, your suspension, your remains of flight, your remains from abroad, this year's suspension, a subtraction of proximity, this year's withdrawal is marked by interruption and very sad writing. My temperature is below 38 degrees and I have no travel plans, no plans. And on the 26th of March, the president's office makes this declaration. Anyone who does not comply will affect NTU's ability to operate with consequences for our students and employees and reputation. Will affect anyone who does not operate with consequences for reputation or comply with NTU students who operate with ability and affect consequences will operate with reputation will comply with our ability with NTU's declaration subtraction of access to travel to medication that will now not move with me in transit no travel no plans declaration of disciplinary action against those who flout against those against action against those against disciplinary against those against flout those disciplinary who flout against declaration against reputation against withdrawing against withdrawing against withdrawing against withdrawing against withdrawal at Greta's blazer refuses to withdraw the declaration. I'm actually nearly 100% that I and my whole family have it right now. Low-grade fevers, cough, dry throat, nonsense of taste, smell, 
I have sickness and therefore I have an event like nonsense, to have encountered longing for nonsense, for something that tastes like safety, like access, like medication, for nonsense encounter against withdrawal, I have no travel, no plans, and therefore will have longing, will have no medication, will have no nonsense of sickness, no way to ameliorate. My temperature is below 38 degrees C, and I have no declaration of approval either for personal or official purposes due to the continuing changes in travel restrictions. No declaration for continuing either for approval or for restrictions and purposes due to the official changes. I have no personal continuing due for the purposes I have. I have restrictions of personal declaration. No approval continuing from the 27th of March 2020. Any work pass holder or his slash her dependent will be deprioritized for entry approval by the Ministry of Manpower. Mom could see no approval to work, could see no approval to pass. Any entry will be deprioritized by the Ministry of Manpower. Mom, 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 mom. No pass to see will see no approval for holder of her dependent. Mom, I will have no approval. I have no manpower to pass. Her dependent could not hold her, will be deprioritized. Mom could not hold her. Mom will have no approval to hold her. Mom, I have no approval. Mom. My temperature is below 38 degrees C and my supervisor makes a declaration. You have to find reservoirs of strength within yourself, but don't worry. You have to find reservoirs of strength within yourself, but don't. You have to find reservoirs of strength within yourself, but you have to find within yourself, you have to find reservoirs, don't worry. You have worry within yourself of reservoirs. You have worry within yourself reservoirs. You have reservoirs of worry within yourself. You have reservoirs of worry you find yourself within. You don't have to find strength to find reservoirs. You worry to find yourself within reservoirs. Don't worry to find yourself within strength. You have yourself within, don't worry. You yourself, you have strength to find reservoirs. Don't worry to find strength within yourself you don't have. Don't worry to find within yourself strength you don't have. Don't worry, you have within yourself reservoirs to find. Reservoirs of you to have to find yourself within. Reservoirs have you to find, you reservoirs. Reservoirs have to find you, to find yourself strength, to find your strength, you have strength within reservoirs. Don't worry, you find of yourself to have strength within reservoirs. My temperature is below 38 degrees C and I have no travel, no means to return. It is my dad. His temperature is below 37.8. He is only achy, he is achy, he is only, he is. He is my dad and I am aching to return. The government has declared stricter border controls, no longer granting approval for any official or personal travel unless on compassionate grounds. The government has declared stricter border controls are no longer for granting, no longer for approval to any official or personal travel unless, unless on, 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 on compassionate grounds. The government declared, declared the controls to which I submit unless compassionate grounds are a declaration of granting, of granting my body approval for travel. The government has declared stricter grounds or to border my body, has declared stricter controls for any official or personal change, no longer of granting, granting change, no longer granting approval unless on compassionate grounds and grounds that border change unless I submit unless on compassionate grounds the government has compassionate grounds declared for granting. My temperature is below 38 degrees C and on the 1st of April 2020 the government office, uh, the president's office declares students and employees a reminder to submit their travel declaration. Reminded to submit, reminded their declaration to submit and reminded, I declare I did not travel on or after the 17th of February 2020 and have no plans to travel from now until the 31st of July 2020. If there is any change, please update the change as soon as possible. I declare I did not and have no change from now to declaration. I declare I did not. As soon as I declare, I submit. If there is any change possible now, I declare to update till I am reminded not on or after the change. I declare to submit in declaration to change. I declare, I submit. Okay, thank you. Um, after myself, we have the absolutely phenomenal Chloe Proctor, to whom we owe an awful lot um, of thanks for kind of today's event. So without further ado, Chloe Proctor is a London-based poet. Her work is situated in response to contemporary poetic theory and is developed on Royal Holloway's Poetic Practice Master's program. She considers her practice to exist in the Catholic realm of involuting soil poetics, read Donna Haraway. She is interested in interjections, clashing discourses, soil, fungus, and semantic messmaking. Her work has appeared in Azimuth, and the Ecology of an Ear, Alterity, and Corblestone Press's contemporary poetry series, Nature and Language, as well as many self-published artist books. 
She is also a massage therapist at Kaima. So without further ado, please welcome Chloe Proctor. Hi. Um, I'm just going to take a minute there because that was so phenomenal. <laughs> I'm shook up. <laughs> Jesus, cat, that was so good. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to read uh, two poems. I'm going to start with Saprotrophic. So to give you a bit of an introduction, saprotrophic nutrition is a process of digestion of decayed matter. Um, the project was conceived as a DIY accordion folded book, which I wish I could show you, but unfortunately it's in my home in London. Um, and it was conceived in response to auto-destructive art, uh, Gustav Metzger and Time in the Codex, which is from Milling by Lisa Robertson. So the book was designed to make a mess as it was extended and it was a collage of slime mold, fungus and bacteria, while the, the text is all to do with human and non-human bodies. So this is the text from, from that project. Into concentric spread arachnid protrusions, taught on vast fort plains is ingesting. Panicle lead plexus, for per whim her terms of movement cap filmic pinched dispersibles. Stemming network diversions further, more simply cancellated torpor, across and not into, nor down. Expressing collective excursions of brain abrasive, not to touch foliated ghosts, but hold. Phantasmagorical copper fretting, diclinus sphinx junk, temple to temple, pavilion to pavilion, across. Lovers scapulae sterno space, upward masticate from root to tip, raw meat foley stand in for mold. Overlaid or spread or topped with, enclosed within something complex between organisms. With anther fingers involuting tendulous connections from sternum to stamen, from screen to screen. Honeycomb shelling essential to growth. The metabolism increases for wires and further wires. The ability to see them. Cryptogram, cryptogamai, the U and I in tongue codes in gloaming. Structure exhausts, compresses, balloons, spatializes, Saprotrophs root her down from dermis. Tears radial layer opens seepage, phallophate scaling, truncated pillars or laws. To speak polyphyletic is to we or us where mono is the register, to spore where streamlined. In arrows, four times suspended, does she appear as seedling? Does she sealing stem? Only saprotrophic nutrition, as in when whales sink their fodder to the seafloor, accumulates excess of things keep sprouting up around us or within, or stretching mimetic. Ovipositing for sake of proposition, a dare, to be stoic, to be semi-permeable when the sense retracts, to shell. Citizens microclimatize the extent to which is cellular incomprehension, is server overload, is neural pathology. Thank you. And uh, the, the next poem I'm going to read is, uh, <laughs> that's just my doorbell going, I'm so sorry. The next poem I'm about to read is, uh, is a bit more recent and it's called Haifei. And this is part of, a, of an evolving project. It's not quite finished, uh, but the, the idea is it's engaging with the complications of um, writing from a lyric communal voice. So what does it mean to try to write as a community? What are the, the kind of ethics and um, what are the ethics and difficulties that surround that? Um, and the objective with this is eventually it will be a longer form study of pronouns in which the aim is to kind of reach a resolution for what a proposed, a proposed universal could be. Um, this has a pronoun key that comes with it, which, which works a bit more visually, but um, with, with, the, with the technology available to me, I'm just, I'm just gonna read the bits that I can and, and hope it works out. Hi Fee, pronoun key. We one, the public. We two, private community. We three, proposed communal model. Us one, public social model romantic. 
us too, private social model, romantic, us free of community questioning, our proposed universal. To speak we too done down to tape loop synchronicity is unwieldy reeling terror estate with arms full heft misshaping fingers on its ridge. For us too, private practice, hooking onto us one, expected. As we too do like it when there is us too tessellating correct, we one do not go digging often enough, which is our source. Hyphen finger hefting terror doubles hook for cliff edge in its fullness. If there is to be us too, can we too let it be so with these accumulations of dirt in sink intact? If there is to be us too, can it be so that we free in practice is possible? Wielding hyphenated apparatus on the public estate is where we free can be found to let the loops run. We free to the hinges are uncovering while upward sifting is a constant. The we one is auto, it's our automatic. Incoherently go reeling as shapes that are taped can go on playing. In the skybox machina coding is rewritten as cotton. To till of late is choreographed exploit of we one, so we free hook under the hyphen to under the hyphen us to under the hyphen is to different. Having scrolled through we too encounters us free, which is not to say epiphanic exception being us too was not expecting us free to be there. Us free makes us one of us too. How could us free? be brought into what is ours. In the stern with the slats refracting punctuation at a slant, inflection paralysis in not knowing the correct register for this re-meeting, of not knowing where us one and us two ends between two bodies, space enough for us two to be at reach from one another. Omission being the distancing thing and not us free, then let it be us free again. Terror on fingertips is ours emerging with pollen. Synchronicity attempting as Japanese knotweed strangulation mirrors airborne fibers pack the lungs. Mouth full of little steeped sponges is once removed account of public system failure, no less private. To seek a missing thing is sharply focused when in translation, discovering knowing that we too are left with nothing to do about it. Tashe and Ahola, she becomes he, a missing person, is in it. Body becomes public body, locked away under, becomes rich nutrient and pilgrimage site. We too did think she well loved, the grief is ours. That which is our lost is lost in motion and not in terror, which is still ours. We one shut the blinds for procession respect for us free. We two postures grief shape. She with Shinafena insistence is soil humoring. Thank you. Um, so I now have the absolute pleasure of introducing the fabulous E.P. Jenkins. Um, E.P. Jenkins is a poet and artist from London and, a f and the founding member of the Crested Tick Collective. She is currently on the MA Poetic Practice course at Royal Holloway. She works with concrete poetry, digital poetics and collage. E.P. aims to create work within and generated by networks. Her book works can be found in the Welcome Library, Senate House Library and the National Poetry Library, as well as on her website, epjenkinspoetry.com. She is a big, witchy, weirdo inspired by folklore, medical history and desire to bring back the feminine and the queer to ecological understanding. What a total babe. Please welcome E.P. Jenkins. Hello. Thank you very much, Chloe. That was gorgeous. Um, I'm going to follow on um, from one of the last lines from Chloe's poem, actually, and start talking about soil, which is my favourite thing. Um, so here is a poem 
uh, called Gardening Part One. It's um, in a series about putting uh, rituals and uh, witchcraft <laughs> back into nature and um, queering the garden up a little bit. So um, this is gardening. Plant hands into soil, remember she must wait for the hairs on her knuckles to grow. And this will take time, but they will grow. Crystalline paper cuts and nicks from ant bites, there may be ants involved, will prise open from the inside by new flesh, raw fingers, Bible page skin, and nothing to lose. From their tips, roots will sprout, and through them she will drink. And then I did a gardening part two. I'm not very original with titles. The witch has no time to wait for germination. Instead, shovel down dirt with a teaspoon, teaspoon and remark at how little it tastes like treacle. She will know she is nearly finished when aphids start to accumulate on her eyelashes, but she will not worry her cat eats aphids. Once her stomach is a bin bag full, her womb will take the excess. This is the goal. Vines grow up through veins and curl around capillaries. Cysts on her ovaries will burst like overripe pea pods and from them pour chamomile and foxglove. The witch's garden is the witch. Um, this is a, not a poem about gardening, sorry. Um, it's, um, if you've ever really, really not liked someone and thought, oh, I wish I could like put like a curse on you or something, but didn't know how to do it. Um, you, you might have other practical skills like knitting. So this is how to hex someone with, with a knitting pattern. Um, it will occur to her that cowl sounds an awful lot like scowl cast on 20. If she could wrap a tight red line mouth around her neck, instead, this would all go a lot faster and she needn't keep an eye on the mountain tension. Knit two together, knit two, yarn over one, yarn over. Images of angry sheep. She'll try not to laugh because this is serious work. Knit two, slip stitch one, knit together, pass over. The texture of crunchy nylon wool makes some people's last nerve stand on edge. Hers is perched on the edge of a needle on its head. Pearl two on the wrong side of the bed this morning. And maybe that's why she feels so crunchy. Repeat row one, but she never learns her lessons. Holding on to all this grief only makes you repeat row two continue, cast off, whip stitch the two ends together in an infinite loop. The hex is sealed, hand washing cold water. Um, and this, all of these poems are um, sewn on to this dress. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna sew a new one on now. This is uh, my new poem um, called Jawbone. I've already threaded my needle. Uh -huh. A good witch always thinks ahead. Premolar. O eight three seven three O. 503K9304, Volpes, Volpes, Polvis et Cinea, Polvis et Cinea, Candid Canivinorus. Matrifagy, consumption of the mother by her offspring, is a jawbone. Parasitic wasps eat their way out of their stepmothers. I'm sure it's not the same thing. I'm sure stepmothers would disagree. Wet snout snuffles at dry. The dog is interested in what I'm doing because the dog is always interested in what I'm doing. Restless fox agitated by the rabbit in their teeth, 308, 307, longs for a toothpick. Like the witch, they'll shovel down dirt with a teaspoon, always causing trouble, I'll call you Kitsune of the Kentish Downs. 
Vulpus Invictus. Archaeologists' plastic nails dig graves to free the dead, a soil caesarean section. Metrifugy, or bottle caps that nestle next to dead teeth, jewels in a crown of Coca-Cola. E15A premolar 308, E15B K9 304. Jawbone jutting out of dirt glacier in a sun-baked sea. You only get to see about 30% or so. Soon that will be all that's left. So, thank you very much. Uh, I now have the pleasure to pass on to um, an absolutely amazing um, poet, Laura Helen. So, Laura is a founding member of the CT Collective and is an alumni of Royal Holloway Poetic Practice MA course. Laura has read her work as part of the Royal Holloway Boiler House Sessions, the Small Publishers Fair at Conway Hall, Rustique the Literary Cafe with the group Big Trouble and the 2019 Runnymede Literary Festival. Her previous work has been collected at Senate House Library, the National Poetry Library and the Bodleian Libraries. Please welcome Laura. Hi everyone, uh, thank you Emma, those, those poems were amazing. Um, and thank you for joining and celebrating Earth Day with us. Um, I'm going to start with five micro poems um, about the density, I guess, of being stuck in a flat um, surrounded by noisy neighbors um, and how my world, I guess, is really constructed right now. Extreme measure of the video game, digital reverb, if we are maintaining the correct distance of two meter sound and April's worth of the environmental crime. Problemneighbors.co.uk devalues the day this encounter. Open Kitchen is having a video call with what happens. Future slip on between micro recorded bird song with upstairs rumbling two meters vertical vibrating on the flow. Hi, Laura. I've just messaged the tenant. Human trials for shared walls to begin by audible in the kitchen, living room, hallway. Petition for legal requirements for ceiling height in UK homes. The nice one and the creepy one loud restrictions in the day, plug in at 4.10 to manage this phrase, plan the floor in steps. Um, and I'm just going to finish with um, some older material, um, which I wrote when living in a house share a couple of years ago. Our house as a recurring nightmare, haunted home, crash site and launch pad, dark at midnight, shared walls make for a house that becomes corridor. She wakes up and tells me what she dreamed about, though I can't listen until I've cleared the debris from her face. 12 hours and 17 minutes later, we notice an old friend has blocked you online. This happens again on the 22nd of October, lopping half virtual connections through extremification of inhabitable anxiety. Six month and pacery period diverted into home full, carving rights of room out of sound space that sweats into sharing. The home is static as we molecules bump up against one another's screen walls. Five minutes, life hack, couple, a four months, flick me, chair it. Where in this room do you mean? Suck the living space out of me, honey. I'll do my best to find someone who will gel with you all, but this is non-negotiable. Negotiate one mile into unfathom, camped in my throat, sore from gating the gauzy room that menstruates your ideal weight, which is one third suffocating, beery beneath phone call anxieties and compliant in negotiating a negation of the home via email branded council cancelling complaints. Um, and now I have the joy of um, introducing the fantastic Martina Kranjakova, um, a Slovak-born writer based in London, 
with a background in social anthropology. Uh, she currently works as a copywriter for Arturia, a music equipment manufacturer. Her creative aim is to focus on embodiment, improvisation and psychotherapy. Uh, welcome, Martina. Hello, hello, hello. I think you can hear me now. Okay, great. Um, so welcome everyone. Um, thank you so much for being here with us. And thank you, Laura, for the lovely introduction. Um, I uh, will read um, two poems um, from our anthology. Um, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoy it. Um, this one is called The Cry of Pebbles. A sea lions mocking, bullying the pebbles, fresh air confused in its changing home, flowing away, squeaking, tipping with no edges, not far, not far, particles everywhere, the pebbles are crying. A circular fence of icicles melting away, creating wet soil, previously phallic. How fast can we grow our roots into the unknown? Then we become plants of crisis. Time listens to your home always with the help of the seabed thrusting into the washing machines of goddesses, releasing all the unwanted dirt of muted generations. Home comes with voluntary substance. Um, also, happy Earth Day. Um, I was just um, thinking about how amazing um, poetry is um, in terms of, you know, rereading it at a different time and a different moment. And yeah, I'm just relating my past work to the earth and seeing it in a new light, which is just refreshing and kind of deep. Um, so uh, the next one is called um, Common Ground. The moment of communication of common ground, do not confuse it with my permanent architecture. I am stepping on a different floor and rearranging all my boxes so that you can read that they are not boxes, that they are not me, that they are not you, but a moment coming back to available emptiness. It is our underneath that can go either way. Um, I will now read a very short poem that I came up with yesterday. Um, and. Uh, yeah, it's funny because Laura also had a um, video game line, which I have here. So uh, yeah, I think that's synchronicity. Um, it's called Stimulation and Simulation. Become a curator of stimuli with me. Be the oracle of shape-shifting words. Lick the fruit hanging from the ideological trees. Mesmerize me with a video game turned reality. And now I shall read um, the last poem um, that I also wrote yesterday. Um, and it's amazing what you can come up with in a very short uh, space of time. So I really encourage everyone to just maybe take five minutes today or even more and just um, write something down. You know, it's, it doesn't have to be smart. It doesn't have to be anything, um, but it can be really relaxing to just do it ancient oxygen. I want to explain ancient geometry by curling up into a ball. Something is rising, but I won't climb the fire. Breathe, breathe, breathe with me. Is this prehistoric oxygen? You're always inhaling the future of your own exhale. Go inside, swim in your veins, and see how much we've polluted the sea. You feel everything, you just don't know it yet. Um, and I will now introduce our lovely Tanisia Pratt. Um, Tanisia Pratt is a poet, artist, and plant mom from Nassau, Bahamas. She's interested in memory, archives, and the natural and social Caribbean landscape environment. Um, her poems often focus on the Caribbean landscape. Um, and Tanisha's work can be found in palette poetry, um, pre, 
National Poetry Library, Write About Now, among others. Um, she's currently studying her MA in Poetic Practice at Royal Holloway. Um, so welcome, Tanisia. Everybody, hi, how are you? It's a pleasure to be here. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. Um, I have a few poems here, Happy Earth Day. Um, and what I'm kind of working on doing with my poetry is incorporating a lot of nature within it. So I just wrote, well, actually edited a poem called Race is Weird here. So I just want to share this with you. So this one, called Race is Weird here. I say this as if I'm still in NASA, as if I'm texting you from the mute green chair of my apartment and the rain is a morning heavy, sunny and sweeping scents of crab grass through my screen door, washed up snails on red stones, hummingbirds taking daily nectar. And when I look outside, I admire the roses even think about cutting them for a pot of rose water before the gardener does. What does he do to them anyway? I found out from Miss Allen that she loves her roses decapitated. She told me they grow bigger and redder the next time around. Where do the heads go? Does a gardener take them, consider the pot the way I do? Or does he bag them up, tossing them on a stranger's estate do they animate when no one's looking? Hibiscus and bougainvillea joining the rose heads in discourse on stemtrification, on just cutting, all those politics. I stare at the roses once more, now, bigger and redder heads painted on clear walls, joined with petunias that drape behind the green chairs of this cafe, and the rain is a fleeting scatter gray and sweeping scents of soaked tar through the glass door, bacon rashers on the grill, humans wafting cigarette smoke. And this was a poem I worked on in one of our projects where we dealed a lot with um, subjects and pronouns. And this one is called Spooning Monsters After Dark. The dark, your body a shadowed silhouette beneath the bathroom bulb. You inch closer to the bed. I sleep with eyes wide shut. Your body is not your body, but a beast, reptilian lore hovering over my chest. I lost my body when you, Atlantic surge, pulled me under sea sheets, coral fingers scraping my legs, cold blood, seaweed tongue, slime on my breast, electric strands standing at the nape of my neck. When you open your mouth, I remember how we're, we're not supposed to. And the last poem I'm going to read, it was just recently published in pre-Caribbean Literature Magazine. Um, and if you follow me on Instagram at Nefernisi, um, I'll share the link to that after the live. But this one is more of a response to the theme of ecocide and ecocide is basically just environmental genocide that's going on in the Bahamas, going on in the Caribbean and across the world. Um, and I wrote this after Hurricane Dorian happened in September. I wrote this in December and it's called Teach You How to Swim. And I have a bit of a explanation in the beginning. So this is the explanation. Sit by the beach, listen to the ocean, listen to your Grammy talk. Sit by the beach, listen to the ocean, listen to your Grammy talk. Sit by the beach, listen to the beach, speak to the ocean, speak to the beach, speak to your Grammy, speak 
listen, listen to your ocean, listen, 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 listen. Respect, you know, elders. Teach you how to swim for Mary Pratt. All my churn is leave after some time and once they just go, they just don't come back. Sometime all of mine has come back, you know. Sometime they just don't want to go till they have their own churn. And sometime when they churn, have they churn. Yeah. But you just don't check for me like that, man. Not like how you used to check for me. I remember you used to mussy come around every Sunday. Now it look like you're caught up in all kind of things. But I still happy I get to see you. Oh, I happy you come cause these children don't come around like that. And they don't even bring their children. You eat? I think I can find something here for you. Yeah, you, you can't get too deep up in these things. Soon I can be here. And when I dead, after you done been in all kind of things, you ain't gonna be crying and hurting up your head. You still is eat fish? I think snapper here, but I know. You know, fish getting harder to catch. Conk, snapper, grouper. I remember you used to like when I bait grouper. But I know when last grouper catch eater, fish ain't around like that no more. That's cause them people is be teeth in the fish when they small and every day they digging. Digging, digging for something new. That's why you can't let everybody touch your tanks. But I can fix you something, baby. I'm so glad you come to see me because I'm been feeling too good. You know, this food don't be no real food. And I sure that's why it is be having pains. That's why I just say, I know how long I can be run. So make sure you come check to see me while I still reading. You remember we used to go to the beach? You was always scared, you know. So I used to have to hold you in my hand. You yeah, ever learned to float by yourself? I can show you, you know, if you come back, maybe tomorrow maybe in the morning or the late afternoon when it ain't too much tourist run. If you come back here, I can teach you. I can teach you just how to swim. Thank you everybody for listening. Um, and I'm going to pass it off to another amazing poet. <laughs> Essay, so let me just read her bio one second. So, Tese Ohomwaibi is a Nigerian born third culture kid performance poet and storyteller. She is currently a stud, she is currently a student of the MA Creative Writing Poetic Practice Program at Royal Holloway, University of London and is interested in exploring a poetics of implied storytelling through fragmentation and embedded lore. She uses archetypes of childhood such as fairy tales, African folk tales, and nursery rhymes to explore childhood trauma. When not turning your favorite childhood memories into works of horror, she does live streams on history, culture, and feminism on Periscope. She has performed her poetry at the Small Press Book Fair London. That's, that's what she says, London at the Abuja Literary Society in Nigeria. She has also performed her work online on the Own Voices channel and on Periscope and on her personal Periscope at the Black TCK. So you can check more of her work at the National Poetry Library or at the Black TCK and also on her website tesseohomoibi.com. So let's welcome Tesse. Hi, y'all. Hello. Hi, y'all. I hope you're all doing well and having a great day. I am Tesse, the Black TCK. I'm 
Actually, I'm really excited to be here and to be able to share this Earth Day with all of you. Um, I'm really pumped, especially just because I feel like this opportunity and just like the time that we're currently living through is just a very unique time and thinking about the existence of people in this space and this new world and what the world is like outside has really like inspired some of my work recently. So I'm going to be reading two pieces to you. Um, one piece is called Rockabye and it is, uh, it is one of the pieces that I've written kind of as a response to my exploration of nursery rhymes and, and folk tales and fairy tales and how some of these seemingly um, innocent works of art can be used, can have dark stories behind them and can be used to kind of share darker messages. Um, so yes, so the first piece I'll be sharing is called Rockabye. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Hush, a word, say, word, a uh, word. Hush, little baby, a mockingbird. Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird. Hush, a mocking hush. Hush, little baby, hush. If that mockingbird don't sing, if that mockingbird don't sing, baby, don't sing, hush, hush, baby, hush, a diamond ring, hush, baby, hush. What will you do? Will you tell them what he did? What will you do, Will? You tell them what he did? Buy you diamond, baby, ring, diamond ring. Hush. What do you remember about that night? Do you remember what about that night? Do you remember that? Hush. What about hush? That night, hush, do you remember, hush, remember that night. In a room, sit, in a room, sit. The door opens, the doctor watches, draw family. She says, draw. She says, family. She says, draw. She, I, she, I, she draws a house. She, I, she, she draws a tree. She draws a girl behind. The tree, she stops, she. Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Everything is gonna be all right. You're scared, I ain't there. Don't sing. If that mocking bird, don't. Daddy is with you in your prayers. 
don't cry. Hush, baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Hush. So that was the end of my first piece. Um, the next piece that I will be sharing is a piece that I've created relatively recently. It was done in response to this beautiful exhibit I saw at the Hayward Gallery um, that had this, that was just this video of a forest without a horizon. And it showed the forest in going through different seasons. And as it went through these different seasons, um, you got to see just how quickly and rapidly the forest would change. And it just really reminded me of just, you know, what the forest is and trying to capture the essence of a forest and how can we do that? And so I wrote this piece about trying to capture and perform the forest. The Forest Project. One. New England forest. You are at New England. You have a recorder. You are recording the forest for an hour every day in the first week of the season. You are repeating this every four weeks, three times a season. You are repeating for a year. You are transcribing the sounds into notes. You are making them into composition, into instruments, into opera. <clears throat> you are turning the notes into letters, into groups of letters, into words. You are turning the letters into words on a page. You are arranging the words to represent the cross section of a forest without a horizon. You are performing the words. You are performing the notes. You are performing the music. You are performing the forest. Disintegrating to Waldster Biden 2.0. Go to Germany. Go to a forest dying. Take a recorder. Record the forest in the style, rhythm, and rhyme of poem one. Transcribe, perform. Perform the last days of the forest. Perform the funeral, the wake, the burial. Perform the goodbye. Three, dead. Go to Nigeria. Go to where a forest once was. Take a recorder. Record the ghost of the forest. Capture the wails of the phantom trees. Transcribe, perform. Four, Amazon. You go to Brazil, you go to the Amazon, you repeat poem one, you record, you transcribe, you perform, you save. Rewilding. Go to Wales, go to the Atlantic Oak Wookland, Coed Felinard. Take a recorder. Take a pencil. Take paper. Take a camera. Record the forest reborn. Capture its essence. Question everything. Touch nothing. Record. Transcribe. Perform. Six, 
replanting. Go to Hertfordshire, go to Hartwood Forest, take a recorder, take a pencil, take paper, record the forest reformed, transcribe the sounds of the forest reformed, capture the deceptive cadence, write it onto the page, touch anything, write the deceptive cadence into the air, touch nothing, write the deceptive cadence back onto the page, into its form, into its content, into the white space, into the no space. Record, transcribe, perform. Perform replanting in the gallery space. Transcribe replanting into the environment outside. Write it off the page and into the voice, into the body and into the air. Write it onto the walls and into materials, tangible and intangible. Perform. Seven, orchestra. Record, transcribe, perform. The symphony of forest sound. Play it every day for a week, every four weeks for a year. Fill the space with sound. Keep playing even after there is no space for more sound. Thank you. So I will now be passing on the mic to E.P. Jenkins who will be closing off this beautiful event. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Okay, so it should be illegal to sign off to me after Tessie just had me in tears, because fuck, oh, sorry. That was amazing. All of you were so good. That was so beautiful. I'm just here to say um, like goodbyes and thank yous. Um, so, um, as Chloe mentioned, this is our anthology, and you can get that on our website. But um, watch this space because with new poets joining the group comes new poets, new poems, and hopefully a new anthology in the future. And on that note, it's been an absolute joy to watch our little group grow. Um, so please go check out the video that was mentioned earlier on, which was our community recording of um, unnamed dragonfly species. Um, Chloe is too modest to mention this, but she was the absolute organisational tour de force and editing genius that made this idea into something so spectacular in like a matter of minutes, it seemed. It was crazy. Um, thank you to, I'm reading off my phone, sorry. <laughs> thank you to all of the wonderful poets in this group, all of the wonderful poets who are watching, who contributed to the video, who support us, who promote us, as well as our lovely friends and families who we have all coerced into watching this while they sit in their pajamas at home. Um, we couldn't do this without our lovely little community. So thank you all so very, very much. And a lonely clap for my CTC girls. <laughs> and I think we're all gonna pop in and say goodbye now. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching. See you later. Thank you. Thank you so much to everybody who's joined in, uh, especially from Singapore, where it's like literally 10 past midnight. Thank you to every single person who supported us on all sides of the planet. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Let's see. <laughs> Bye. Bye y'all. <laughs> Hi y'all, thank you so much for joining, yeah, family and friends all over, I really appreciate it. Everyone's clapping at home, that was, uh, that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much y'all. Bye. 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 Bye.